Okay, I'm getting diddly. Not quite happy with that lip yet. But, it's more water. This is raw umber. Now I've got her face really Okay. Okay. Mix up the darkest dark I have. Her hair comes out about like that. Get the bulk of her hair on first. I need to get some. Better flesh tone.
I am going to have to come not get too far ahead of myself here because her skin tone is getting darker and darker as this dries. I am about finished with this session. Alrighty, I'm going to leave this alone and let it cure. One of these days, folks, one of these days I'm going to work on some real surface. Cad red and Cad yellow light. It's my go to skin tone. See? Easy peasy.
Restating your layers is not unusual when you're painting portraiture because you rarely ever get the colors that you want the first time, the first go around, because it takes layers to get luminosity. Do not paint from an inkjet print unless you've got a really good inkjet printer. This is an Epson Echo Tank and it puts out really good copies. If you if you don't have access to in there. I didn't want that much rose. Then train yourself to paint from your screen or monitor. I'm using this because y'all are there and that's how I roll. I very rarely, I think I've told y'all this before, I very rarely mix on the palette. The purple is there for fun. It's got a little yellowish. There's a little yellowish right there. And see, I can just bring it up to that other wet color and blend it and I've got a third tone going on there. Let's spray this down a little bit. Put just a little more white right in this hot spot. Now, because the paint was wet underneath it, it won't be white, which is good. Just painting shapes. That's her black swimsuit. I'm going to put that on last.
I told you I'm not much of a talker sometimes. That's why I never did so good in group classes. Or what I call social painting. They're fun. But I was there to learn how to paint. I was there on a mission. Learn whatever I could from whoever I could. Wet wipe works wonders. I felt like that I was already handicapped because I had started at age 50. And I'm living proof that you can do it. I had always worked in creative fields. We had our own marketing company and stuff like that. And I had done computer art, uh, you know, design and stuff like that, of course. I had never been exposed to a paintbrush. So, all I'm saying is, using a little bit of that green, warm that up just a hair. At some point in your life, you're going to be alone. Your kids are going to be grown and have families of their own. What are you going to do? So I tell everybody that you need to find a hobby while you still have the resources and Now that's not so white right here. I'm going to put a little bit of purple there. Um, You know, before you retire, before you I don't know a polite way to say this why are you still young enough to have the desire to do it whatever it is so from age 50 I still had a good 20 years. And didn't have the internet then either, see? So I had to find online classes, I mean, in-person classes. Had to spend a lot of money traveling to workshops. I think I, I did. 
I wrote right over her. <laughs> I erased her on my plastic. I'm of course partial to painting. Because it's something that you can do from any circumstance that you may you may have. I did some of my best watercolors after a major surgery when I couldn't do anything else. It's a little bit orange. And I'm going to be doing these one hour videos for a while so if you guys want to know anything let me know and I'll be glad to do it for you I like painting outside or how you paint from a chair you know anything like that but start now, even if you can only do a couple hours a week. God forbid you have something happen like happened to me where I lost my daughter, 50, 51. And you talk about rocking your world. That'll do it. So I wouldn't wish that on anybody. We all know that those things happen. Learning to paint saved my life. So, enough of that. But I will add this little tidbit. Be aware when you're talking to somebody else. Because people rarely people like me rarely talk about what their story is. And they do that for a reason because they really don't want the pity they don't want you to look at them different. I don't care. I mean, I, do, I care, but I'm not embarrassed by it. And it helps me on my quest
to improve if I can help somebody else. So there you have it. Do -do 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 -do. So, that's it. Find a hobby. You know how they talk about men, or maybe it was, you know, different generation. When they retired, they usually died within, you know, six months of... That's because they their whole life was their work. And we went right over that spot again. The lower lip comes in before the chin comes out. Now if I had a good green... Better, better. Paint some on, you take it off. All right, we're kind of getting somewhere on her. Skin tone. Now you see I'm counting on this sinking in a little bit. So I'm getting happy with that. We're still getting quite a bit of a... Oh, wait. Maybe I put it over here last time. Is that better? It's pretty good, but now I can't see.
for all intents and purposes, this is a an untreated canvas. This is in the Dina Wakely Journal. It wasn't really designed for this kind of use, but hey, why not? One of these days, I am going to make myself get proficient at chunky drawing. Yeah, I know there are people who would love to do what I do, but I want to do something else. <laughs> In oil, you would paint, I could paint on something like this. 14, 15 different layers. Okay, I'm going to leave that for the time being. This part can be darker. Just a little alizarin crimson with my yellow mixture. It's a cooler red. Then the rose that I, or the cad red, I'm sorry. Makes just a little variation on skin tone. Bet my head's in there. Looking better.
I do not play music for a reason. It distracts and I never know when I'm going to talk. And my choice of music may not be your choice. So if you like to listen to music, put some on. Low. Turn the music down low. I will be teaching you some of my tricks that I learned from some of my tutors. One of those is you need something to distract your left brain, the analytical side. And music does that. And another great, great, great thing is books on tape. The human voice speaking. Will keep your left brain busy. Oh, let me back up a little bit. You need to learn the... You need to learn the um, idiosyncrasies of your chosen medium. And by that I mean the different applications of watercolor, oil, casein, colored pencil, just checking out. And once you learn the the differences in how the pigment is applied, brushes, you know, the, just the general rules of it, then the techniques are the same. Your um, drawing skills, elements of art, those are the same. It does not matter what you're doing it in. Capiche? So you learn something like that once and you've got it. That's uh, the course that I teach over on Teachable is about the the basics and then at the end of that course of the form and shape and color and things that you really know you've just forgotten things that you practice with your wardrobe and with decorating some of those very same principles apply in art You just need to be reminded. From time to time. Still didn't get that light enough. 
I'm not going to let those hairs bother me right now. And the basics of art are applicable to any craft, scrapbooking, you know, anything like that. I didn't get those elements when I needed them the most. And I would ask every teacher, every tutor that I had, every workshop leader, what are the basics? What are the basics? They'd say, go back to the basics. I said, I don't know what they are. And I did it. I tried to study college level art books. I tried to there was I I tried. Let's put it that way. And one day it clicked. And I went, "Oh my goodness, there it is." And my painting skills grew by leaps and bounds after that took me about 10 years to get it. I didn't really want that there, but that's all right. Because I had to dig it out for myself. And I don't want you to have to do that. So that's why I did my class. And at the end of that class, I teach you, I expose you, introduce you to the four oldest techniques in the world. Maybe I should say the most pop popular. Popular. And, that, and I teach you the things that you need to know, the things that make them different. And show you some exercises and talk about the differences and then you're ready to go. Start putting in your thousand hours or whatever it is. Your mile, people say, remember? I don't know what smart ass said that, but you have to paint a mile or do 10,000 hours to get good at something. But it sure is nice when you can do that without wasting wasting your 10,000 hours or however many it You did it again. Let's see where we are here. It's good. And anybody can learn it's not it's not rocket science in the old days in the days of the old masters people learned art by being part of a guild and a young man's family or woman but mostly men
would apprentice him to a guild, a famous painter in their day and time. And at that point, paintings were the only way to document society, the, the, um, the wars, the famines, the, so you have more of a social responsibility, if you will. Because, of course, there were no, I got that nose hole a little dark. cameras or any other things like that so that's um, and then the, the kid would come into the master's studio and maybe the first year he might just run errands you know run down to the color shop the color man and pick up my pigment and not really entrusted with a whole lot And he would gradually work his way up where he could learn to mix the master's colors or learn how to stretch a canvas or who knows what. But then at some point, he would be promoted and he would be able to start painting on the master's work, maybe do all the boring part, and the master comes in and I'm not looking for something like that. Do the finishing touches. That was very common back in the day. And that's how they learned to paint, and that's how they passed it down from generation to generation. So today we don't have that, but we have the internet. This exercise of painting in this book is part of my 10,000 hours, if you will. I've already done that, but it helps to just paint. Now I need Now the upper lip is always darker, so I'm counting on the fact that this is going to pick up some of that dark. She has her mouth open.
Ooh, that's a contrast. Okay, okay, okay. And then we have just a little hint of light here. Which that's not it. Ateliers have came back have came have come back into vogue. Um, that's where it's a school that you physically attend. In the first semester, you might be given only a piece of charcoal and some newsprint. And the only thing that you're allowed to paint are ceramic busts, carvings, inanimate things. And that is all you do for the first semester. So you learn anatomy, you learn the human form. And then, if you do well that first year and perhaps pass your exams, then the second semester you might get a white piece of charcoal to go with your dark. And this progresses throughout your schooling, slow and methodical. until you graduate. It probably takes two years before you're allowed to work from life. But when you do, you know what you're doing. I would have loved that. Okay, now let's see what we can do over here. Something light right up here and right here. I need to work on this a little bit more.
And color is something that is typically not introduced until way late in your career because you're supposed to learn what value is and it's harder to learn value with color. And nowadays everybody just wants to come in and paint a picture and leave with one you can hang on the wall. Nothing wrong with that. As long as you understand that that is not a way to progress. Let's see how many times have I painted this now in that neck area. Her ear is still back there somewhere. I think I got a little overzealous with the hair. But that's good enough. Except it comes out to her eye. No, not quite. That's close enough. It's not about her ear. All right, and I did get black. I'm going to leave a lot of Oh, that wasn't good. That wasn't plain water there, was it? I really enjoy this process. It allows me to paint what I love, which is portraiture. but there are no pressures. I don't want that going down like that. I just want it to kind of disappear. Leaving the green. Purple has really come in handy.
letting my background shine through. I've got a smaller brush. I think I'll get it. It's right here. I'm going to hold my brush, I'm going to flatten the tip a little bit, take a deep breath, and nothing. <laughs> kind of makes it look like it's more than one hair. Soften that just a little. And I called her shower girl, so I'm not going to put the swimsuit or the tank or whatever it is. Now a little bit of dark. Right there. there I usually don't use black But I was having trouble getting dark enough colors in my mixes. And this is a half tone black, so it's not. Now I've got a damp brush and I'm going to carve back into that I'm new to casing um, But I really, really like it. I am just about done with her. I 
I see something I don't like. Got a hard line right there. Alright. Ta-da. I may paint that again sometime, so I'm going to keep it right back here. Alright. I hope you all enjoyed that. Let me make sure you get a good view of her. There she is. Okie doke. That's it for right now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.